Welcome back to class. Happy to be uh, going over some more mechanical electrical plumbing with you, MEP. And today's lecture is plumbing system components, specs, PDM, double I. So specif specs was just uh, specifications. PD is product data, sometimes called product information. And MII is manufacturer's installation instructions. So let's, uh, I'm going to be using a little bit of PowerPoint to share what's going on today. And then we will jump right into the drawings and specifications, product data, and manufacturer's installation instructions. Let's get going. All right, so as, as always, I try and go backwards before we go forwards. And in a previous lecture, we were talking about plumbing systems, drain waste vent, sewer septic, and, and I guess we should be over communicating. That's what I like to do. So drain waste vent, that's the conveying wastewater to the sewer. The vent is what allows air into the waste pipe. And uh, that was for two reasons, right? It was to help uh, vent sewer gas as well as uh, equalize pressure within the pipe. We had the sewer that's going to some municipalities uh, sewer treatment plant or some other system and then we have a septic system which is basically something on on the property and it is collecting waste water separating it in a uh, in a little bit of a underground container with a baffle and then out to a leach field we talked about hot and cold water. Actually, have it here in the photo a little bit here uh, that you're seeing on the screen. You can see the you can see the red hot water pipe right there. You can see some drain waste and vent. This is a multifamily project. So this is a don't know what this is right now. Off the top of my head, probably uh, I don't know what's above it. But uh, let's uh let's go jump so oh, sorry go back so we talked a little bit about roof and how uh, water from rain is handled and it's coming into roof drains or on a home it's going down gutters and into we could cover that I haven't really talked about that I didn't really think about it but uh, on a commercial project uh, with a low slope roof or a flat roof uh, it's usually being collected in drains and routed to then the storm drain not sometimes called storm sewer. I think storm sewer would be a more accurate term if we were in an engineering course. And we talked a little bit about fuel gas, basically natural gas. And we talked a little bit about hydronics. So hydronics being, uh, we showed two things, kind of talked about how hydronics could be like a floor slab heat or radiant heat in the floor or a panel, a uh, radiator panel. And let's, uh, so that's what we were talking about. We were using this this graphic here. We went through the drain waste vent line showing uh, three inch sanitary up with the clean out. So this is below slab, four inch sanitary. This is below slab. This was a floor drain. We we're talking floor drains. The dashed piping was vent. And you can see that right here. So the vent through the roof. This is the waste. Talked about water, uh, water closets, and and urinals and lavatories. And so that's where we were. And I'm gonna I'm gonna continue to use this uh, as, and we're gonna go look at what how you would find what is specified for each. And in the the piping. We're going to jump into the specifications and I'll show you just a snippet, but we're going to go all the way through the specs and try and find that. And then we're going to, I'm going to show you where the rest of the things like the water closets, the lavatory and the floor drain, where those are called out in the drawings because they're not listed in, uh, usually in the specifications. They could be, but uh, in most cases, I'm going to show you where they are. And then we're going to look at the manufacturer's product data and the manufacturer's installation instructions. Okay, I took a snippet of specifications and we'll go get into this. But I want you to remember this picture right here. So when we read the specs on the piping, uh, think of this. This is a bell and spigot 
right here. So that's a cast iron pipe and it has a, a, a bell on it. And uh, I don't know what the spigot part is. I can't remember. Very rarely we've seen this. I think I've only seen it on one job. Um, but this is cast iron. If it, if it looked more like this one back here or that one right there or this one with no bell on it, it would uh, just be straight cast iron. And they kind of talk about that right there. Hubless cast iron. So this picture kind of shows both, but I'm sure that in this picture there's a there's a probably a bell or something like this biggest photo. Uh, anyway, but just remember this this photo. And let's do that right now. So going back to look at remember this 2.2, remember this section 22, 13, 16. All right, I've got the spec book opened up, and I'm actually in the place that we need to look, section 22, 13, 16, just like I was showing in PowerPoint, but I want to show you how I got there, so, and remind you what is in a spec book. So this is our specification book, spec book, and there are uh, 1,650 something pages, and there are written, like, written format they're not graphical format and remember these are contract documents I mean I when we did the uh, when I tested in the quiz a little bit ago and asked uh, what were contract documents a lot of folks actually chose submittals and miss specifications I don't know if the words are too similar or what but uh, specifications this manual right here the engineers repair this and, and engineers architects excuse me and this is a contract document just like the drawings and so this this document's communicating what is expected about that uh, that project and we need to use this information to be able to we need to understand it and then build accordingly so let's let's take a look at uh, what's in here and let's just start the very first page Okay, that's the project we were example. Here's the table of contents. It's not division zero, not division one. What division is plumbing? I want to know what what piping are we expected to use for a drain waste event on this project? That's the question. That's what we're trying to find. So where would we go? What part? Not part two. It's not going to be talked about in concrete. It's not going to be talked about in masonry or metals, Division 5. So where would it be? Division 22, plumbing. Let me zoom in a little bit here. We've got 22. Here's all the sections for plumbing. General requirements. And I might be a little bit in there, but I've already read it, and uh, it's not. So we're going to come all the way down past the domestic hot water piping, domestic water piping uh, spec section and get into sanitary waste and vent piping and sanitary waste piping specialties. So 22, 13, 16, 22, 13, 19. So that's the spec sections we need to go to that would actually describe the work. And let's go to it. Twenty two. 13, 16. Okay, we're in the spec section, 22, 13, 16. I don't know how many pages of it there are, probably like seven. Let's look. Uh, da -da -da. All right, well, let's see, it goes one. So there's the first page, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Now there's seven pages to the spec section. So section 22, 13, 16, sanitary waste vent piping. And we've got this summary right here tells you what it's about. So this section includes the following for soil, waste, and vent piping inside the building pipe tube and fitting so 
it is inside the building. If it was outside the building, it would be designed by the civil engineer. And so uh, they've specified that there. Here's a bunch of definitions. Part one is part one is the general, right? General, more administrative things associated with the work. Submittals, quality control. All right, now we're in part two where they specifically list products. Okay, reading through that, that's a generic statement. Here's the piping materials. Piping materials refer to part three, piping applications. So there's a paragraph called piping applications in part three, and it would it would start the paragraph would start with a three, right, rather than two. It's still in this section because they didn't list another section for applications of pipe, tube, fitting, and joining materials. Okay, and then they list some more options: hub and spigot, hubless cast iron, and all this stuff is related to 2.4 C so talking about shielded couplings for hubless cast iron and there here's a bunch of available manufacturers for standard shielded stainless couplings heavy duty ones here's a bunch of manufacturers heavy duty anyway there's a bunch of stuff but what they told us to go to was piping applications in part three that's there's the part paragraph Flanges, flanges and unions may be used on above ground pressure piping unless otherwise indicated. Okay. Above ground soil and waste piping, NPS 4 and smaller, shall be any of the following. And they list the type of materials that you can use for above ground soil and waste. Basically, this is a pipe conveying soil and waste. Soil, water, wastewater. That's what they're talking about. And these are the options. Above ground vent piping. So what's what's different here? Well, that was soil and waste piping. That actually has the, the wastewater in it. Above ground vent piping. That's the pipe going up to the roof. And it shall be these materials. Underground. So now we're, we've changed from above ground to below ground. Underground soil waste and vent piping, so all of it underground, shall be any of the following. It can be extra heavy class cast iron soil piping. It can be hubless cast iron. It can be solid wall ABS pipe, solid wall PVC pipe, or dissimilar pipe material couplings, shielded non-pressure transition couplings. Okay, so they've listed everything underground that we can use. But I did want to point out, and this is maybe beyond the level of this course, but notice that they listed ABS and PVC, but they didn't list that in part two. Oh, excuse me, that's not good. Oh. In part two, I apologize. In part two, remember when they said hub and spigot? They listed the ASTM that you have to follow for that hub and spigot. And when they say hubless cast iron, they listed the, a the ASTM that you have to follow for that. And then they told you a bunch of manufacturers that are associated with the shielded couplings. Well, it ends after that and there's no PVC information. So all that we have right now in this spec book is that PVC and ABS can be used underground, but they have not specified anything really about it. So it's a little bit in there. I might want to write an RFI saying what uh, ABS piping and PVC piping do you want? Uh, what, are the, what are the requirements for these types of pipe if we want to use them? Okay. That's how you would find that information. It's in the spec book. That's what they're telling us is below ground, above ground piping. Okay, back to PowerPoint. We were just in the whole spec book and I just took a snippet of it. So we're just looking at paragraph 3.2, which was talking about where the pipe goes. Above ground soil and waste piping. So we've got Remember when we were talking about this, like this is the clean out 
and this is above ground above ground above ground above ground above ground waste 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 and then it says sanitary up it could be but it's just telling you that it's changing elevations right here and this one that pipe is below the slab and this one's above the slab so above ground could be one thing above ground vent remember here's our above ground vent through the roof this dashed line that dashed line right there that's going to be this kind of piping and then below slab so we have this below slab right there we have a piece of below slab right there Got that one coming over that one coming over and this one so all that below slab stuff is underground soil waste piping should be that <laughs> i have no idea if this is super boring or not <laughs> uh it seems really dry i'm sorry that it might be dry but the point being you need to be able to figure out where things are specified and what what's the point of this big long spec book and some people will just ignore the spec book and install whatever they want and uh, that that's not what we were contracted to do so if uh, I mean there's there's ramifications for not following the contract and there's risk associated with that so if, if people are doing not following the specifications when they're provided and, and granted some projects like like a simple home are not going to have any specifications a multifamily project not going to have any specifications other than what is written in the on the drawings we've shown that before but this project it went to quite a bit of detail to decide to, de, to define exactly what materials to use and why would they do that well they want something very specific in their building and why do they want something very specific well this is a uh, state of utah and so the one this this building's supposed to last a long time it's it's a campus it's supposed to get a lot of use so they want good products and so they've specified good system good piping and they expect that so we wouldn't be able even though they did have uh they didn't really specify exactly what type what what attributes were with abs or pvc um and, and they listed them as options they still want quality stuff all right so what they want is that all right well that's a joke i just thought saw this online it, supposedly like this is the biggest uh uh pvc pipe manufactured in the united states right now you can see this dude and i took this off of a website so i wanted to gray him out who knows whether he wants his face on on uh, PowerPoint or not. Anyway, I thought that was interesting. Hey, cool, biggest pipe made in the United States. All right, we know what is being specified for the piping. How do we know what is required for the water closet or the toilet, the urinal, and the um, and the floor drain? Where's the floor drain? Oh, they're over there. Well, on that you wouldn't. You might be able to find them listed in the in the uh, in the spec book. And let's go see if we find. Let's go see. Go back to the spec book and see if we can find it. But we're not going to. And I'm going to show you that it's not in the spec book because it's actually. Let me stay in PowerPoint for a second. It's going to be. Remember the idea of a schedule. Remember we have all these different drawings. Uh, and inside the drawings you have a list sometimes and so the information is actually going to be found in a list format and it's going to tell you when we go back to this the w1 is going to be found in the list the l1 is going to be found in the list and so we wouldn't find the list inside of the specifications we still find the list inside the uh, the drawings so a little a little confusing the pipe it was found in it was specified in the drawings there's no there's not a uh, schedule or a list in the drawings about pipe but there is a schedule and there is a list in the drawings for 
fixtures. So let, let's go look at that. All right, before we go look at the drawings, uh, I wasn't positive that the, 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 the an engineer did not list out in the spec the different uh, products for the lavatory, the urinal, that kind of stuff. So I went and checked, and guess what? I am wrong. They do have a spec section for it called plumbing fixtures and it's section 224000 so we're going to go to that and I'm going to eat my words because I just said that normally they're not I said I don't even know if I said normally but most I'm going to recorrect myself now because obviously it's not all the time it's not an absolute but normally I don't usually see uh a spec section like this that's really detailed out like this is going to be so 224000 and my error okay there's 224000 let's make this wide here's what they're talking about the summary is about all these things definitions we know about that right saying for each type of plumbing fixture indicated, we're going to submit that. Here's our quality assurance stuff. Part one's general, so we're warranty, that's administrative. Extra material, that's administrative. Oh man, lavatories. So they're saying that lavatories can be by any of these guys. And it's accessible, wall mounting, vitreous china fixture. Um, and here's all the stuff about it. And so on the counter mounted ones, here's these and the mixing valve and for lavatory faucets and for water closets. So I'm, I'm sort of eating my words, but not entirely. Uh, so they do list out on the water closets what manufacturers there are and the description and even to the toilet seats and the and the flushometers and the urinals and all this other stuff they listed out as options but let me show you what is in the in the schedule itself rather than in the spec Whoops. Plumbing schedules. And this is what we sort of need right here because there's two urinal types, not just one. There's two water closets types, not just one. There's only one lavatory. So in the spec book, they were sort of just listing out what product it is, but it didn't say what L1 was. Let me go back. Right. In fact, let me go all the way back to PowerPoint. You can see my notes. I actually do try and like prepare something in advance. So W1, W2, the U1 and the L1 in the spec book, they didn't list those things out. They didn't say what U1 was like it just says the urinals and there was two uh, water closet types so in the spec it's not telling you the different water types uh, uh, water closet types what a one well, W1 and a W2 are but it is very very descriptive and I'm wrong because they got very very descriptive in this spec book and I wasn't expecting it. But in the schedule they do, they tell you exactly what it is. And the difference between a one and a two for a water closet is wall mounted. And that's a Kohler 4325. Uh, and also a 4325, but ADA wall mounted flush valve. So one's got an ADA compliance and the other one apparently is not. 
Hmm. Okay. Actually, it looks to be exactly the same to me. But... <laughs> so pretty much you can ignore everything I said. No. Uh, the, the schedule is... Uh, is more descriptive. It's in the drawings. It's it's typically more descriptive, and so you do want to be checking your schedules, uh, meaning the lists, when it comes down to fixtures, and not just going to the specifications. So I'm trying to show both. Um, all right, cool. So plumbing fixtures, your L1 is got an inch and a half trap inch and a half waste, inch and a half vent, half inch cold water lines. It's counter mounted, drop in sink, provide thermostatic and pressure mixing valve. We're gonna look at that. That's gonna be a Kohler K2214 with a Moen 8210 with a half a gallon per minute or equal. So that's what it is they're calling out for. Let's go look at what product data was provided to me. Not necessarily to me, just to the project. Okay, so here's a bunch of product data submitted and we want Division 22. Let's see how they did it. Let's just do this this one first. I think this will help us. Okay, cool. So I had already navigated to it and I had guessed right that this is it. But L1 and let's split the document up so we can go uh, look at it. So L1 is a lavatory. L1 lavatory. And they're saying it's a Kohler. And we're on this one right here. So it's a Kohler K2214. Kohler K2214. So this is the drawings. This is the contract document over here. This is the submittal and let me show you more detail. This is all the, the little pieces of information about like you even say it like Ferguson's submittal, right? So this is all the individual product data pieces about all the components within the plumbing fixture systems, right? Um, this one right here, floor or shower drain, we got a bunch of information here about that. So we could go check that, but I don't want to yet. I want to go show you, stick with this. All right. So we've got this Kohler and it's supposed, to, we could assume right now that also it needs a Moen 8210. And that must be the faucet. So let's see what, okay, yes. Here's the Moen for L1. And they're saying 8210 gallons per minute. They didn't actually list like which one they're gonna use. I don't think, maybe they did up here. But they want 8210 with a half gallon per minute or equal. So it would have to be that one. 8210F05 would have to be the one that they're going to use in order to meet this specification right here. And normally, Whoever's submitting this stuff 
like takes a highlighter and says that's the one we're using and we'll highlight right over the top of that wham right there but I don't see it listed anywhere maybe they did at the very beginning so we're gonna uh, we're just gonna be a little bit thorough a little anal here for a second I'm sorry I'm just curious let's see Floor drain, floor drain, floor drain. So they said they're going to use the MOE. And which one did we say it had to be? The half? It had to be the 8210F05. Oh, hey. So in in the... <laughs> they, they gave you the list here and said that's what they're going to provide. Here's the little options so yes they are saying that they're providing the half gallon per minute one do you see that 8210 f05 8210 f05 half gallon per minute yep they got the right one very good nice job guys gals whoever submitted it plumbing contractor uh all right so we got this mo in here what else did it say in that description for the sink? Let's just, just just take a look at before we go to well, let's go see what else there is first. So then we got the drain. So here's our L1. So here's the drain they're planning to use. Sounds good. There's the P-trap they're planning to use. Here's the little stops, water stops they're planning to use, and they're planning to use those ones right here. And the hoses and the escutcheons and the mixing valve. The mixing valve was a, uh, let's see didn't say but here's a mixing valve let's see what they said in the spec section uh, spec book so under mm -hmm. lavatories here's the faucet interesting yeah, it's it's an 8211 in the in the Yeah, check it out. So the spec book, I'm, I didn't move back to the spec book over here. And they're saying it's an 8211. But on the, uh, on the schedule, it's an 8210. And it's a good question as, to far, as far as which one governs, but I would say this one governs. And that they've done it correctly. But it'd be worthwhile noting that in my submittal note saying, please confirm that the 8210 FO5 is what you want and not what's listed in the specifications, which would be an 8211. And I don't know what the heck the difference is off the top of my head. I might call the plumber first and ask him. Okay, they've got flush valves. Hmm. Well, so right here in the spec, they are calling out three eight chrome plated copper stops. And here they're saying uh, outside diameter three eighths angle stops. That 
my my daughter just asked me if we're almost done. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. And I'm sorry that the lecture is not almost done. <laughs> All right. All right. Anyway, I was just trying to show uh, that the submittal is supposed to uh, be supplemental information to what you see in the contract documents. And I hope we did that. And I'm hoping you're seeing like exactly what a stop looks like, even though I'm, I'm assuming you probably do because they're on your sink. I'm sure put, most people know what a, a steel braided uh, uh, water line. So, I mean, I think most people know what that is. This is something in discussion. Do you know what that is? It's a it's to cover up the hole in your cabinet in the back or the hole in the wall. Uh, if it's going on, a, if you got a pipe to a wall, nice trim piece. Okay, but what is this? I'll bet you, what is the single fixture temperature controller? Well, if we went back to, this is a commercial building, right? And this is a place where we have to have ADA compliance. This is where we have to uh, design, the designers have to design to meet uh, all kinds of folks. This is not a, a single resident, so you're going to have requirements that you're not going to have in a single family residence or a apartment or something like that. And one of the things that they want is a temperature controller. And so let's go see if we can figure out anything about this temperature controller and what, where is it? It's called out, but what does it do? So it's a thermostatic mixing valve and point of use. So it's going to be at the at the fixture itself, at the lavatory, at the sink. Uh, so it's going to hold a desired temperature within plus or minus three degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so imagine you're not wanting to send hot water. Anybody ever burn their hand on a in their home or or I don't know burning first degree? What is it? Uh, anyway, you, you can get your, your water in your house to be dang hot. And so, uh, they will, they will turn up the hot water, uh, running through the building and run it pretty hot. But when it comes to the lavatory, they're going to have wa hot water on one side and cold water going to the other. And then before this line comes back to the, uh, let's see. Yep. So right there, they've got a cold inlet and a hot inlet. And then what comes out and goes to the actual uh, faucet or part of the faucet, it's controlled by this thermostatic, uh, uh, what would you want to call this thing? Thermostatic mixing valve. So you can set this thing to a certain temperature so that uh, you can't, can't burn anybody with the water it'll automatically kick out according to this thing plus or minus three degrees hopefully that's just a little bit of uh, more detail I was hoping to share sort of this process of I've got contract documents I've got product data coming in where do I find the where do, where do I find what's required some we went and looked at the in the specs for piping we went and looked in the specs for uh, fixtures which uh, surprised me they actually had it and in the schedule had a bunch of information is specifically tying well sorry specifically tying these together with the with the labels right so the l1s and the and the w1 and the w2 so the urinal one the u1 where is that there it is u1 and u2 and then more detail that, so that you're getting more information. And so is this information super useful during construction? Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. We're, we're, I mean, it's it's something that the engineer really cared about and that they bothered to specify specifically. So we need to make sure that it's part of the project. Is it a major coordination piece? No, because the plumber is going to do that by himself. It's not. It's a standalone component within the within the water system. But the sink itself that touches all kinds of stuff. There's an interface there. So both uh, the faucet and the sink, they're both surface mounted, right? So what do we have to pay attention to there? Well, actually undermount looks like, I thought I said surface mount. Yeah, it's a counter mounted sink. Even though it's counter mount, it's under mount, huh? So that's interesting. I uh, I was reading counter mount and I was thinking top mount, but it is a counter mount, but it is under the counter. So that's definitely important, right? And so who cuts the hole in the countertop? Definitely not the plumber. So this information is really good coordination information to be able to send to the folks doing the counters so that they can drill both the or they can cut out the hole for the the sink and cut these uh, holes correctly because this is going through the counter as well okay let's go back to powerpoint so to wrap this up a little bit this discussion we have a drawing I want to know where to get what product is the L1 and the U1 and the W2. And it is specified on this project, but it doesn't specifically label inside the specs L1. But L1 is definitely labeled on the schedule inside the drawing. So here's our L1. Here's uh, the W2, right? The w, then the U1 for this particular rest, uh, men's restroom is that one right there. So we've got a drawing and a schedule. So we've got a floor plan and a schedule working together to communicate what, what these individual uh, pieces are. But what about this sink over here? Well, it's an S1. Okay, that's an S1. It's an undermount stainless steel. Anyway, we could go look at the product data and try and find that as well. Uh, what about the floor drain? Let's go look at that. Well, and I think that's what I want to spend the next few minutes doing is, is just remember, we, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ignore the floor plan and ignore sort of the piping. And let's just go through a little bit of the, pro, the, the product data that we have. And, and let's just get a feel for what, what was submitted. What, what information are they providing? on a commercial job uh, rel about the size of the, cl the building that you're in right that you're, you're attending class in on a regular basis. Okay, back to the submittal. I have the submittal right here on this side. The drawings are right here. We've got the spec book still if we need it. And let's just kind of peruse through what's in the submittal. And we've got a stamp page and some information from Ferguson because they did a nice job laying out uh, kind of like a table of contents of what ones they're going to use. You're seeing people's comments in yellow uh, from from the reviewers. Oh, I don't know why I got yawning today. Sorry. So first thing they had listed what in the in the submittal they have this uh, what looks like what is it it's the secondary uh, roof drain downspout nozzle so as it exits the building as the secondary roof drain comes out it exits the building below above ground and that's what you see coming out of the ground i mean coming out of the wall it's this little cow's tongue looking thing and uh, anytime water gets to that level from the rain 
Remember the roof drains and the, the primary and secondary roof drains are offset vertically. And so if there's enough water on the roof coming out, uh, co coming down from rain and it starts to back up the, the water can't, can't uh, all be handled by the primary, which is going into the sound, the storm sewer backs up, gets high enough. It hits into this, the secondary. That's the product that we're looking at. Okay, cool. Now everybody's seen one of these things I'm hoping, but that's what they're going to provide for the, uh, water cooler more information about the water cooler this is super inf good information to have we need to coordinate these locations look at this this is the information we need in order to frame it right right so this this uh this water cooler thing it actually sits back into a little cubby thing and the water lines here and it's showing the framing and how big you got to leave it opening Anyway, there's all kinds of really good information right there on, on what we need to do because it's filtered. So this filter uh, looks like this is a side view. That's a top view. This is a front view or an elevation, right? So we've kind of got all kinds of pieces of information here. Plan view, a section cut, an elevation view. Very good information here that we need in order to coordinate with the framer uh, to be able to provide that information or, or to be able to do it correctly. Yep, there's the rough opening. It's, now it's telling you some of the manufacturer's installation instructions. Okay. Oh, we already looked at these. These were the stops. Maybe we didn't. Here's a, here's some more drinking fountain slash water cooler. And more information on how to install that. What do we need on this guy as well? Well, it's showing electrical, still showing filter, all kinds of good information in here. That, again, we need to use for coordination. It's because not all that's on the drawings. The drawings are just saying that there's a water cooler there. Um, it's it's a EWC dash two. Let's let just for sake of kicks and giggles, let's go. Uh, Let's go see if we can figure out where in the building the EWC-2 is. And, and I like this program, so we're going to do it. We're going to go EWC-2. And we're going to let the, the computer find it for me rather than me searching through the drawings. And we'll let that run in the background over here for a second. And we got some P-trap information. Whoop, why did it flip to me? More water cooler information. All right, shower drains. Check this out. They've got like this adjustable top part of the drain that goes up and down. Plus they have this flange out here that picks uh, stuff up. So the the idea behind this is that the finished floor is poured to here, but the subfloor is poured to there. And so in a shower, the shower pan, the what's below the tile or what's below the finished surface of the, usually this is a tile application right here where you have an adjustable height of, of the top drain. And then this part also acts as like a, a secondary, um, secondary drain collar to pick up some information there. Very cool. Check that out. We've talked about this. Oh, hey, look at that. They've even got, so this product data right here, the inline floor drain trap sealer. I talked about this in one of the, one of the lectures that traps will dry out and the sewer gas will come up through the floor drain and it'll get into this uh, into this room, and they're saying that if you put in their product, uh, a sure seal type product here, that even if your trap does dry out, you won't get your sewer gases in there. I'll bet you that was specified, or else they wouldn't have provided it. So I'm sure the designers actually put it in the drawing saying, provide a floor drain trap sealer. I'm sure they did. Some more. Uh, 
more floor drain trap sealer information, more more floor drains, more trap sealers. <laughs> Way too much trap sealer information. All right, we've got the, uh, what is this thing? Called a wall hydrant, an H1. So this is uh, a place to hook up a hose. All right, and a little square key. So not anybody can open it or, or operate it. Looks like it's got a couple options. It could come with a cover, but that's not what uh, they're they're going to provide. They're going to provide this one. Okay, hopefully that's simple. Bunch of information about it, how it goes in these different uh, boxes and stuff. Hose bib number one. So that's a wall hydrant. And then HB, so there's different locations, uh, and if they have a HB called out, which they will on the drawing somewhere. Hey, we're back to the lavatory. Okay, we'll take a break and go look at what we were going to say. So let's go look at, I was looking for a water cooler. It's called EWC-2. Where is it? Hey, look at that. It is... So let's, let's uh, bring open the drawings a little bit more. So it's on level one of the building. So it's the main floor of the building. <clears throat> and I, you don't have to know all about the building, but here's a locker room. Over here is work workout area. And where are they saying it is? Well, it's in the workout area room. And here is that EWC-2. Pretty cool. So note one, what does the note one say? Provide associated domestic cold water, domestic hot water connections to fixture C schedules. <clears throat> so they're even telling you to look at the schedule, not the spec. I was Anyway, I feel bad about that. Told you not to look at the spec, and then I went and looked at the spec, and they, they had it there. And what do they have here? They have the, the engineer's got that shown here. Look, he's got the round. Typically, that means you're going down. Got some T's right here. You can follow that around. All right, well, that's where it is. That Now we know that this thing has a big back to it, right? It has a pretty big back, like, cause it's got a filter and stuff, if that's the right one that I'm thinking of. Might not be what the ECEW, uh, might be on the front. Yeah, the EWC2, let's go look at that again. Does it need that back area or not? Cause this is the elevator. Elevator's not going to give up his spot for a filter. Let's go back to it. So here's our EWC-2. And that's the that's the elevation view of it. That's a side view. Need a need a top view. And you know what? They don't give me a top view. So we're gonna have to use the side view. Look at that. A side view. <clears throat> no, there's no there's no there's nothing on the other side of the wall filters on the inside face of the wall there is pipe penetration according to this but so if they had it called out like an ec1 i believe was what it was ewc-1 that would have been recessed in the wall so had this said ewc-1 we would have had a, a coordination problem we needed to figure out but they did a good job e WC-2, so what could we coordinate? Maybe the finishes around here. 
Uh, the other thing that's kind of important is this elevator shaft is a fire rated wall. So we've got some fire uh, pen uh, firewall penetrations that we have to pay attention to in here, as well as this pipe can definitely not go through the elevator shaft like it's shown right here. But that's just the the, art, the engineers kind of just showing us this is the basic route. There's no way that anybody would run uh, water lines through an elevator. Well, <laughs> should I say that they would never? Uh, anybody that's been on a job for a while should know that they don't go through an elevator. That this is not the right, the right, right location, right? So just to over communicate a little bit. This is sort of the outline that the arc, and this is grayed out, right? So this is something they picked up from the architect's layer, because this is the information he's actually trying to convey over here. But but it's worthwhile looking at what the layering shows. So this is showing entry point to the elevator right here and the elevator shaft kind of goes around like this and elevator shafts are always fire rated and elevators super picky about people taking parts of the elevator shaft space so guaranteed that pipe's not going to go in that spot it's probably going to go in the above the ceiling like this and then drop down the wall and then we'd only deal with fire rating no big deal Let's see where else that thing was. Okay, well, we got uh, an EWC-2, and this is on what appears to be level two. Level two, yep. In the office space, we've got an EW electric water cooler, and we've got that there. How about this guy? Hmm, that looks like a blow up of the same location. And then it found it on the schedule. I like this program. I like Bluebeam a lot. Easy way to find information of where this thing's going. Hi. Worthwhile. Let's go look at EW. Let's just do it. I think this is a great example because we know that this has a big space behind it. And let's use my program real quick and we'll find an EWC-1. And let's go see if there's any coordination problems with it real quick. We'll hit that program. Let hit that in there. Let it... Uh, do its thing. It's almost done. Interesting. Yeah, I can't tell where it is, but it looks like to me they've got a double wall for it. Look, Architect did a great job. Of creating enough space so that this thing can be in here and it'd be worthwhile looking but it sure looks like it's correct to me great job designers how long did that take I don't know 45 seconds to see if we had a conflict stuff like that's common okay let's cruise back through our uh, our submittal let's see what else is in here Oh, we were already looking at that. We already looked at the, uh, I looked at discussions, hose brackets, interesting. This thing's like in a janitor's closet, mop sink little uh, curb, kind of nice. Oh, hey, look, roof drain. We've been talking about roof drains forever. <laughs> get a kick out of like how much I belabor a point sometimes I think but look at that that's the you've seen this in another detail but they've actually given us uh, the diameter so when we cut the the roof deck has to get cut and so if, if we wanted to cut the roof deck without having this on site we could definitely follow this information here and we could get through it pretty pretty easy Got, uh, oh, look at that. They got a water dam. Sometimes they use these instead of offsetting the, the drains uh, vertically. Sometimes they put these on for the, um, for the secondary. So rather than offset the whole drain vertically, they can just put this dam on. And so the water has to build up and over the top there. Yeah. It may also be used in an emergency overflow for conventional roofs. 
right? Very cool. Good information there. RC RP1. So that's a recirculating pump. What's that all about? Well, that's for another lecture. We're on the circulating pump. We've got all kinds of, hey, remember that S1 sink? There's that. There's the faucet associated with it. We kind of go back to the schedule to go make sure. A little laundry sink. ADA stuff. This is worthwhile to have because you got to know all the backing information associated with this. Look at this. So they're going to have to, this is the information we need in order to get this guy. So this has got all the backing on this side and tell you exactly where to put it. Also telling you where all the, all the, all the other things are. What's this? Oh, a trench drain. Hey, all right, cool. So what is this thing? This is going to, this end is going to be connected to a waste line. Going to have a, probably a trap and come off. But uh, what they'll do is in a, in a con concrete uh, floor where they want a trend, they want to collect water or, or runoff or something. Uh, maybe they're washing down something. They'll have this, this, uh, they'll cast this trough in and line up this with the top of concrete and then water will pour. So these, this piece is not, actually installed like this it's actually shown kind of separated but it'll come down on top kind of like this so water will come down here go along that trench trench drain out to most Dad, likely i found the secret door key awesome you found the secret door key yeah okay you want to come say hi to the class come here okay come here Hello. Oh, you gotta come over here. Look. Hello. Out. Out. Say hi. Hi. Okay. This is a trench drain, okay, buddy? Hi. Okay. Hello. We're just looking. <laughs> Hello. Anybody in? <laughs> Urinals. Anybody inside? Nope. They're not in there. Anybody inside? Oh, okay, there? go play. Ah. Go play. Uh, I think it's in here. Oh, give me back my quarter. Okay, you have your quarter. And the secret door key to the bottom. Ten. Nine. Eight. All right, we've got the, the wall mounted. Here's a WC2. That's what the WC2 was. Here's our WC1. And of course we need to check it to see if it was the right one according to the manufacturer, but uh, or according to the specifications in the and the schedule. Here's where it starts. Here's our WC1, so it's wall mounted. It's got this uh, sensor, flush valve. Okay, hey, you're being too loud. All right. Got a hot water heater here. All my kids can come play, play with them. So let's wrap this up. Spent a lot of time going through this submittal with you guys. I just wanted to show you what some of these things look like. Here we got the pressure reducing valve. That's what that's literally what they look like. You can see the little mechanism inside showing how it works. Okay. Do you want to meet the class, kiddo? What? Do you want to say hi to the class? Sure. Okay, come say hi. This is my daughter, Taylor. Just say hi. Sup. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Bye. Meeting all the family tonight. That's something I'm not so sure what that is. Anti-siphon vacuum breaker for irrigation systems, huh? Irrigation systems usually like sprinkler systems, what we're talking about, like for, uh... anyway. Yeah, I'll have to learn about that. I don't know what those are. Backflow preventer, 
talked about this on a waistline, but this is a water line backflow preventer. And so the water will come in one direction and it can't go back the other way. That's code requirement. On, uh, so that you can't contaminate water going back through it, uh, which could then pull uh, from like, you can't get water to come from the, uh, like the sink and travel back through uh, through the pipe, you'd contaminate your pipe with uh, bacteria and stuff. Got uh, reducing, okay, all kinds of cool stuff in here. There's a little strength cast strainer. So you got water in here, and then there's because there does there it does have debris going through the water lines, and so. Uh, it has this little thing that you can back out and it'll, it'll have a little uh, filter on it. You can back that out and clean out. It'll catch all the debris in your water line. Kind of a good view of it here. Water coming in here. Any little pieces of particles get trapped in this strainer as it goes out that way. Trap primer. Let's see if there's anything else interesting. Hey, clean out. They've got a clean out in here. And that's the end. So let's look at the clean out and I'll wrap that up. Remember we had this clean out on the in the janitor's closet. And so there's this little housing and something to build a uh, back that out. Take off the cover and then there's a a cover to go over the drywall so the drywall would actually be here and this thing covers up that big hole pretty nice thanks for joining with me uh, I hope this was valuable had this idea in my head to do this since uh, for a long long time just trying to show the relationship between drawings specs product data and how to use it and, and uh, not everything in here was super useful, like I would go use to coordinate, but I hope that uh, some of it was useful that, it, hey, I, I now see what this is, or I now see what that looks like. And the product data is is really good in order, if you don't know much about the what the W1 is or the W2, it gives you a chance to get through and what, it, what this information is. And when you get really good, uh, you know which ones to pay attention to and which ones not to pay attention to as far as what ones need to be coordinated because coordinate's a big deal and which one like this right here the EWC uh, I was telling you that back pretty common that there's no double wall there but the, the engineers did a great job so have a good night we'll uh, see you in the next one